what a wonderful way to start the week. The month of June is very exceptional at the Lois Coaching class and we are very excited. Like I told you last week, we'll be having lessons starting this week on how our body language impacts our image. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are. My name is Loy and I'm your image expert, the author of the Absolute Success Image book. Today we are learning about body language. Yes, remember 100% is communication, but 60% is what the body says. The gestures that we make, how we posture ourselves, the facial expressions, our hand gestures, so everything speaks 60%. Can you imagine? The words that your mouth never says is what your body speaks. And today we're going to be looking at how that impacts us. The 30% remaining on the 40 is the words, then the 10% is the silence. That's why you see that in court, even when you keep quiet, it means something. So be very careful when you use your silence. It's a very powerful tool, but be more careful how and when you use your body language. Sitting is one of the postures that we so much either have physical body problems from or we live healthy. Remember, a healthy mind is a healthy body. So in image, we always advise, or I advise that when you keep your body in the right posture, when you are standing, when you are sitting, when you are walking, whatever you do, definitely your mind is going to be at it from the inside out. Now, today, I have two sets right here that I need to demonstrate something for us from. This is called a kitchen countertop. Sometimes you see them in restaurants, sometimes you see them in bars, you know. So you wonder, how can I sit on such a chair without either uh, tipping myself off this, you know, or losing my, you know, my step. So I'm going to show you something. First of all, our chair is always found like this, isn't it? So when you find your chair like that, this stool, it's actually a stool, you find it like that, the first thing you need to do, please don't try to fix yourself inside like that. It's, you look very disorganized. So you need to pull it out without making any noise and then slide it to the front, okay? Then the next thing you have to do is hold it. So when you hold it with both hands, you take a step, okay? Step on that, uh, on that, on that, on that uh, little metal that you find there, which is supposed to be hanging for your feet, and then you sit. So when you sit, you collect all your clothes together, everything, and then you hold on to the, 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 the countertop and tilt yourself right in. Then you will be able to very much so have your set in front of you, whatever you're gonna have, this is a water and some peanuts, what you do. Now, something else that we do when we are sitting in places like that is to get curved in like that. You don't do that, okay? That's a hunchback posture. This hunchback posture is not good for you. We're going to even demonstrate it later in the video. Don't miss out while, how we sit in office. You don't use this posture. You have to maintain a straight up posture. This is a stool. So you sit up to the end of it and then you sit upright. You can look at my back right there. It is straight up, okay? It will keep your chest up as well and your head high. So even when you're eating, do not bend inwards. Stay straight, let your hand go and pick up your snack or whatever you want to eat and then keep eating it. If the person that you're having a conversation with is seated right in front of you, go ahead and keep facing there. If like I'm talking to you, you are sitting here and we're gonna have this uh, snack together. I would tilt a little bit and position my food to where the person is sitting, like right now, so that I don't lose eye contact. It's very important to keep an eye contact with the people you are talking to. If it's a big group of people, then definitely you know that you are going to be looking at one at a time as they keep speaking. You cannot keep your eyes going around like that. That is rude, okay? It speaks certain things about you. We're not gonna go there. So what you do as somebody speaks, you keep looking at them one at a time. When your turn comes to speak, then you speak, focusing on one person who you think your message is relevant to if you're speaking to a group and not a one-to-one. -one. So this is what we do in this particular scenario. There are many places you will find too. Some of them are wooden, they don't even turn, but they don't have this back. So that is easier. You can get in around anywhere, but just don't squeeze yourself inside. So if we are inside like that and we need to get off, you need to tilt back at the front where you have enough space, hold on to the chair, okay, on the stool, and then you take your first step down, get off, put your clothes down, and then get your second step down, and then step out. 
that is what we do. Then you go ahead and pick up every other thing that belongs to you, like your purse or your bag, whatever it is. So I hope that you will, the mistakes that we have been making on this kind of setting, we will not make anymore. We learn and now we have learned something new. Let's move on to our dining table. This is a dining setup, very basic. I did not want to put all the complicated little fish knives and dessert knives and all the little fish uh, forks and dessert forks. Too many glasses. We normally have three glasses, a glass of water, a glass of white wine and a glass of red wine. So, and then we have a dinner plate. This is basically a dinner plate plus a bowl and then everything else falls into place. We have little side saucers where we put uh, maybe if you have bones or something where we put that now this is a basic one when you are invited to somebody's home or you are in your own home remember it is body language and image you don't want to come across as a person that does not know what you're doing or has not been to any etiquette school at all or has just never learned any manners so you want to come across as a person that is wow these people really know you are traveled even if you have never left Uganda, you can travel through Google. Yeah, that's a free one. So what you do is, first of all, you wait until you're invited to the dining. Please do not take yourself to the dining because you've seen the table set. No, you wait to be invited. So when you are invited and you're shown where you are supposed to sit, let's say this is my seat. Don't try to you know, fix yourself again in the dining chair. What you do, you lift it up very nicely and pull it backwards okay without making any sound make sure you create enough legroom for yourself yeah and then when time comes for you to sit you take in these two ways either you take in your first leg and then you sit collective collectively with your clothes and then you take in your second leg and make yourself comfortable just make sure that whatever you do there is no sound quicky quicky you know those quicky quicky sounds no sound and then if there are arms on this chair, use the arms to lift up the chair and push yourself forward if you need to be comfortable. If you don't need to do that, like my kind of chair doesn't have arms, what you do, you lift it, okay? There you go. And then you pull your table mat or sitting right in front of you, okay? Now, why is the fork on my left and the knife on my right? Anybody knows why? because that is actually how we hold them. Please never get there and turn them the other way around. It doesn't work like that. It's always supposed to be the way you find the table set. The people that set these tables, either in your homes, get some training so that you don't get embarrassed. The image of your home or dining etiquette has to be looking really exactly what it is, sophisticated and really more classy, okay? So this is how we use them. The knife is supposed to stay in the right hand and the fork is meant to be in the left hand. So you pick on the food and then you cut it. That's a lesson for another day. We'll have a, if you're interested in the table, a dining table etiquette lesson, please comment on the video and I will deliver that message for you. The glass is right in front of you on the right hand side because if it is here, then you have to take your hand across the plate. This is not good. So the glasses are placed right there. Just it's easy for you to access. Don't put it in the middle. Don't put it right here. Because, you you know, a lot is going on right here at the front. So you don't want to end up messing up the whole place. So this is something that I needed us to know. Now, one last thing about the table is when you are sitting, try to also maintain a straight posture. Keep your chest up and your head high so that the people that you're talking to can be able to see you elevated. And because you're eating, you don't want to sit with a, sorry, with a handbag posture. You don't want to do that. Your diaphragm is literally pressing on your stomach. You don't want to do that. You'll get satisfied quickly before you have enough food in your system. And then the, you're going to have the, what is it called? The gas, you know, the excessive gas from the food coming upwards. Okay. So you don't want to have a heartburn there and then you don't want to start to belch in front of people. You want to keep a straight posture so the food and whatever you're drinking keeps going downwards very, very easily. So another one thing that I need to let us know is we do not rest our hands on the dining table. Some of us seek comfort. Either we hold ourselves, we give ourselves a little hug, or we do this on the dining. We do not do that. Okay, we don't do that. You keep your hands down. Only when you're eating do they have to come up. Even when you're speaking, avoid having a lot of hand gesture going on on the dining table. All those things are basically body language and they're very, very important. 
Today you might be dining with your own family and you do not understand the value of uh, not doing, uh, practicing some of these things. And that is very dangerous. Now, there is a second way of how we can sit on this chair. So you can either go inside with your bottom, okay, and then carry your legs together. Yeah, hold on to the chair, carry your legs together, and there you go. You're already sitting. So when you come out, you do the same thing. Hold on to the chair and swing yourself outside and stand up. And then you position yourself well. Now, this body language issue is very important. These little basics, I mean detail, even this way your feet are. If let's say I'm talking to you right now, I know you can see my feet. If I'm talking to you right now and my legs are like that. Do you know what this means? It means that I need to go. Like I'm talking to you, but I need to go. So that can't happen when you're talking to somebody. Keep your feet where the person you're talking to is. Please do not keep your feet like that. It means like you're confused where you're going, this direction, the other direction, and the person you're talking to is right in front of you. You want to gain more stability with your body and want to posture it better. You can take your right leg in front, make sure that all the weight is on your left leg and you're able to lift this leg so that you can always just have yourself, you know, a little slimmer and looking nice. And some people want to even have their hands like this. This is a standing posture that you can take on, especially for the ladies. If you want to occupy more space and feel bigger and you want to be like, yeah, I'm the lady here, I'm the girl, then that means that you need to just take one foot, your right foot, in front of you and then spread out your hips and then still fill the space. Now, this makes me wider. However, this makes me slimmer. Okay, so you need to learn these things. If you feel like you, ha you are bigger than me and just want to look slimmer in the pictures, you do that. And in the pictures, another thing you can do when you are in a group especially, you just give a side, okay? Nobody's going to see all this wide. It's going to be this. So this is slimmer than this wide. So with those, if you need more lessons, please comment on the video. Let me know right now. I'm going to take us to another set. Let's go look at the office situation. How do we sit in our office chairs? Plus, how do we behave when we are in those conference rooms or boardrooms? In a bit, I'm going to be right there. So just don't even think about pausing the video because I'm walking there right now. And see you in a second. So these are some of the chairs that we use in our offices. And I just wanted us to know how we use them especially when it comes to sitting on them because we buy them for sitting now. Some basic rules when we are purchasing furniture, please do not buy a pretty chair for your office or even your house in the living room. You need to buy a chair that has special features. This is an office chair and some of you have seen this, probably your bigger bosses using them. It has a, uh, a, a wide you know, chest area, yeah, shoulder area. This is very good to support the back. Because like I told you, that posture where you're bent inward is not good. So when they create such chairs, they design them to support not only your chest or your back, but even your neck area. And then we have it slanting inwards because the human body is built in that the shoulder downwards to the chest is quite broader. So we have this part and then the back to be supported. There's an anchor below uh, towards the tail of your spinal cord which needs this support. Now let's try to see this chair when you sit in it, for example, yeah, so you sit in this chair and think about it, all this space is left behind. What are the basics of how to sit on a chair? Your limb, this part, has to fit on this bottom part of this chair. So you need to sit and make sure that your whole thigh is resting comfortably. This chair has two layers. You can see there's that layer and this layer. They are basically to support you to gather up your thighs and bring them inward so that you do not sit in a spread manner. Is that fine? So when it uh, supports your thighs, the blood flow is definitely going to be good. When you sit upright in this chair, this chair is not my size. So you can see 
it has a lot of space even if I am really feeling it on the bottom the back part is not what happens if I try to lean in it this is what is going to happen and this is going to draw my shoulders inwardly and that is not good my chest is going to be in if I'm going to be working on the computer it means I have to be like this and this is a very uncomfortable posture my chest is going to pain my neck is going to hurt and then my diaphragm is resting directly on my respiratory organs you can hear I'm not even breathing well I need to make sure that I sit upright. Why do I have this cushion right here? This little cushion, you get it and put it right at the back on the tail area, okay? Like right there. Don't put it here, no, because this part is the important part. So you put it right there and that will automatically give you that posture. So in case your desk is in front of you, you just have to now put your hands at 90 degrees and go on and do it. Do the typing. You keep your head straight. That is going to help you not to have a hatchback sitting posture. Now, when you get off this seat, some of us, by the way, before I forget, you tend to be swinging in the chair, yeah? You swing and you're the boss. You expose a lot of power and authority. Remember, image, everything speaks. You might not be speaking the power. You know I'm powerful. I'm the big man here. I'm all this. But because you're talking to somebody and doing this, probably chewing on your pen or even mostly cross-legged, that's what you're exhibiting. Power and authority are inward parts. They are inward attributes. You don't have to do them for us to know that you are. By the time I walked into your office to meet the CEO, I knew that you are the CEO. Okay. Now, we have another chair right here. This is mostly used by the you know, normal people in the business, in the organization. So I love this chair personally. One, because its fabric is very light. It allows in air through. Leather does not allow you to breathe in the back. So you're going, you're going to sweat and heat up in this thing here. It is very nice. Now, another technique when you're buying a chair, it has to be soft but relatively hard. Because when you sit on a soft surface, you're going to have a lot of pain as you're going to be bending your spine. So this particular chair is very amazing. Remember, ladies, you have to always gather up your clothes before you sit, hold on to it, and then sit in it. These chairs are very embarrassing as they tend to be moving a lot every time. So when you do not hold on to it, you're going to end up sitting in space. So you do that, sit in this chair. Again, make sure your whole limb is in the chair. Try to make yourself as comfortable as possible. Maintain a straight posture. If still this part that was designed to support your back doesn't fit, pick up your cushion. I encourage everybody to buy a cushion. Have one and pad it right there and boom, there you go. Straight posture keeps you in a thin waist and has your curves right there. And then has your shoulders up, your neck is in the right posture, your chin is up, your steady, your brain definitely. When you're speaking to somebody, you're doing your work, every organ within you and inward part is definitely, you know, running up and about, thinking forward to where you're going. If you feel like your back and chest need more support, then you're going to have to use this kind of cushion. Okay. So when you use this kind of cushion, it's going to give you more support so that if you try to lean, you still maintain a what? A straight posture. So body language is very, very important. When you are sitting, you make sure that you sit exactly with your feet on the ground. When your feet are pending, they cannot reach on the ground, then you need to get your furniture or carpenter uh, person to design something for you to step on so that your feet are firmly there. Even when you're in the airplane, they always tell you to put your feet at the bottom. When you wear close shoes to work, like me, or high heels for the ladies, you need to take off some time and as you're sitting behind your desk, take off your shoes so that the blood flow can keep going smoothly and smoothly. Here it comes, goes down here, probably supported, and then goes down and then returns. That way you're going to help yourself have a good blood circulation and water flow and oxygen flow inwards in your body, three of the ends and, 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 uh, and uh, you know what, your muscles are going to be loose and not tense. Last and finally, we're going to have to look at this kind of chair. Now, I talked about conference rooms and classrooms and boardrooms, yeah? This chair is metallic, it does not represent those, but we're going to use it to demonstrate something that we always do and is not right. This chair is an outdoor chair, most people like to have it on their rooftops, shades or balconies or gardens. Today, I want us to learn something. When you go to the conference or boardroom, there's those conference chairs, you know them. They normally don't have hand, arms, and if they do, that's perfect. What happens when we are told to sit on these chairs? We sit on them, right? 
So when time comes for us to stand up, guess what people do? They stand up. Have you heard that before? I know, and some of us are really guilty. But that's not right, we don't do that. What happens is, you have to let, let the chair stay in its position, yeah? So when you sit on it, sitting on that chair, and you are told it's time to stand up, let's take a break. So you position yourself properly, push your legs or draw them outward, yeah? In a comfortable position, not so far away from you, but close to you, and then you hold on to the arms of the chair if it has any. If it doesn't have, then you hold on to the chair itself. But now that this has arms, I'm going to demonstrate with that. So you hold on to the arms and then stand up. No sound. Isn't this better? So you stand up straight and elevated and like here yeah, I did the right thing. Nobody even got to know that you, you were there. So when such a situation happens to you, you have somebody sitting next to you and dragging their seat, please teach them how we do it. The different ways of seating, and uh, I, let me take a second to just demonstrate some of those. Now, especially women, when we sit, one, you have a situation going on. I wore a round dress for a reason. We always let our clothes go, you know, like that. This is not right. You're either going to stand up and end up naked, or even you're sitting naked because the dress is spread all over, or you're going to have your dress get torn in case such chairs have any uh, fabrication that has not been, you know, smoothly uh, filed out here yeah? so you need to always make sure that you gather up your clothes very nicely that's why I wore this dress to demonstrate for us and put them right you have time don't rush you have the time put it right now one sitting posture for the ladies you can have your legs crossed at your elbow, your your ankles okay cross them at your ankles and sit like that now there is another way to sit which is this if you look at the queen, most of the time she is seated like this. This is the most amazing, easiest, decent sitting posture that you can ever have as a woman. It keeps you straight and then your feet are together on your knees. Yeah, they are together if you can see that. And then down there also on your ankles, they are together and well settled on the ground. Another posture that you can try is the slanting, the side slant. You choose which side slant you want to have. So you might want to push yourself up a little bit and then have your feet still on the ground and just slant your legs to the side and still maintain a straight posture. Remember, you need to look at the people you're talking to. You can do that on even another side and do the same. It doesn't matter whether you're wearing high heels or uh, you're wearing uh, flat pumps like I am, okay? Then another one you can try, ladies, instead of doing this, you know, this is like, bossy i'm here unless it's a photo shoot or it's an environment where you can do this but for a lady you cannot we can't cross leg like this this is more masculine yeah so what we do is we do the same but then we slant it okay we slant it so these are some of the postures that you can have and you look really sophisticated and nice body language is very important if you want to obtain your absolute success image and i cannot tell you how much I have spent a lot of time training myself as well. Next week, when I come back, I'm gonna show you how to, to loosen up your muscles from bad posturing. When you have that hatchback feeling, when you need a physiotherapist, you don't have to even think about those things. If you practice these little ways of sitting right, especially in office, you're gonna be well. Watch out for next time. We are going to still continue with body language and its impact on image. Lois Coaching Class is the place to be every week on our YouTube channel. We upload a new lesson. Like, subscribe, and find me on Facebook, Lois Coaching Class. Twitter, Instagram, I use Loi Kwagala, and LinkedIn. Let's connect and see you in class. Cheers. Bye.